All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian Primer, it's Tribeca Trade Group, and welcome to the end of day recap for Monday, October 28th. So just looking at Google's earnings, uh, looks like some metrics beat, some uh, were a little bit light. Uh, you know, the bottom line is, uh, it's kind of crazy to me, the price action today, right? I still, uh, I will tell you, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that I get in trading, and I've been doing this for a long time, but there's some things that I honestly just don't get understand probably will never understand for example who bids this thing up two percent today uh, so normally what i would say is oh well you know i would look and say there's short interest and maybe it's some short covering going in to the um to the to the earnings print but um that's not the case with google so i i don't really get it i don't know who bids this thing up two percent uh and it's basically back to the um to the open but I don't know. Anybody has any great thoughts on that? Please, please let me know. But we see it every quarter, where just names. It's almost like um, they're trying to like trap you out of a name before earnings. You know, because certainly I had going into today, I was talking to a couple members about you know potent, potential earnings trades uh, for Google, and um, you know right out of the gate, obviously things were pretty strong and just kind of stayed that way through the end of the day. So really, just didn't get a didn't get a chance to put that trade on today. I put on a very tiny play on it, but um, I said I'm like, there's, you know, this is not what I was looking for. For the name, I'm not gonna, bu I'm not gonna put on a trade uh, going into earnings when the name's already up two percent because again, we see this time and time again. Again, have no, uh, don't really understand why somebody or whoever is bidding this thing up two percent into the earnings print. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe a little bit of fear of missing out. People looking at some other names possibly moving, but. You know, if you did that in the stock today, you know, of course you could have day traded it. But the reason why it's a little bit difficult is because you know it's a high price stock, twelve eighty eight. A lot of people are playing options in in a, in a name that's this high priced, and that's really difficult to do with the um, implied volatility really jacked up. So um, that's the the big name for for the day. There's of course some other names. Um, you know, basically on days like this, right? And I want to go over all of the day's moves. Um, Akamai is one name that I did play a little bit. It's not doing anything, um, and I'm surprised. I thought Akamai would would move one, would move big one way or another. Uh, but let's just talk about like uh, I like to always get into the strategy when things are moving like this. So first of all, you know, we kind of rallied right into the open, and it seems like again, um, and I repeat myself a lot with this one. But the majority of the moves are happening in the overnight market. Now, we did rally a little bit here for the first till about 1030, but that's as high as we went. So it continues to be the moves are happening in the overnight market. And that, again, that is not anything new. I think I talked about this towards the end of last week. You could go and you could look at, um, I know Sentiment Trader, who's a good follow on Twitter, tweets about this. But, you know, it becomes very difficult uh, when... You're someone, you know, if you're someone like myself who <laughs> runs a trading room, you know, I basically just try to, um, I always say when we're up, um, especially the way that we've been the last couple months, we, if we come into the day up a half a percent somewhere, somewhere in that area, I'm, I'm a net seller in the first hour of the day. Uh, you know, I'm taking profits on things that I've, you know, kind of legged into, not just the day before, but, you know, over the last week. Um, and then I kind of look for some opportunities if there's any around, but I'm always a net seller on days like this. And it just, you know, it, it, it again, the reason why I mention this is just so that it, you understand that the majority of the moves are happening in the overnight market. You can come in, you could sell, and then basically what I was saying for the day, uh, I think right around 11 o'clock, I'm like, well, I think that's it for trading for me for the rest of the day. And I really didn't do much, you know, just kind of set things up, um, you know, looking at some names for earnings. I'll, I'll show, happy to show you um, my trades for the day. Um, but yeah, I was long some Alcoa going into yesterday, you know, had a great day on Friday. And Friday I had a half day because I had to go to um, the eye doctors. But um, Berkshire, that was the trade that I was on on Bloomberg. Um, able to take a target in that today, wonderful. Um, I added, you know, just ver some very small stuff. Um, but I took off my EWZ play as well. Took a target in Berkshire. 
took 90% of the Alcoa trade off from last week. You know, and then I just kind of look for some things that, you know, what, what the tape is doing. Um, so EEM, a lot, of a lot of activity in EEM emerging markets, as well as FXI, um, a lot of China names moving up. The issue with this emerging markets is it's taken out of Epoch. Right, which we talked about in the trading room. So we saw this, you know, there's one trade, which I took this trade because I think it's good risk to reward. But do I think e establishing a trade, I usually am um, taking off trades when we hit version point of controls, but I thought this was compelling. Um, you know, 43 and a half, 44 and a half. You know, if we kind of get back, somebody's maybe thinking that this goes back to April highs. And I put this trade on for like 30 cents. Uh, or I think 29 cents. Uh, I get the price in here someplace. Yeah, 29 cents. I, you know, um, I even said here, even though it took out of Epoch, I still think it's kind of interesting. I would like some exposure to emerging markets. Uh, I talked about an FOMC trade today. So, right, we've got, of course, um, that coming on Wednesday. My thought for FOMC, which I'm happy to share, is that I think that they cut rates. I think there's a 90% chance that they cut interest rates on Wednesday, but I think that they're probably going to pause a bit. Um, I think they dial down the need for another rate cut, and they probably say wait and see. Um, you can see that there, there, it's a 92% chance is what the market is uh, pricing in right now, according to Fed Fund futures. So 92% chance that they cut rates on Wednesday, and. Um, and we'll see what they say for guidance. So I put a chart together earlier. Let's see if I still have this up somewhere. Uh, la, 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 That's not it. We're looking at work. Um, I should have one with a bunch of arrows on it. So what so this is a chart of the, the VXX, which, by the way, this is the worst instrument ever created to man in terms of trading. I personally, again, only this video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. But this thing is the biggest piece of junk ever for VXX. If you're watching this thing, I would, you know, I would, I always watch the VIX, not the VXX, right? So I could talk about for five minutes about why this thing is a piece of junk, but all it does is, is go down the VXX. So again, if you're using this, I don't know why you're using it, but um, I could tell you it's good to like, it's, it's a little bit harder to trade the VIX. So there are a couple things, a couple situations where I will trade this VXX, even though it is a complete piece of junk, you know, for a very short term trade. And again, the reason why, and you can, if you have questions about this, you could certainly ask me on Twitter or wherever, but it just goes down over time. It does a ridiculously bad job at tracking the VIX. So I you know, I know it has the name VIX on it and um, retail likes to trade this thing, but it does a tremendously ridiculous job of, tr of tracking the VIX. It is not the VIX. It is something that tries to replicate it and it's horrible. So, um, and again, it just goes down over time where the VIX doesn't do that. Um, and they even like, you know, they had to change the instrument around so that they wouldn't show the history anymore. But it's, it's, it's horrific how bad this thing tracks the VIX. However, so what is this thing done? So every time I've got a arrow drawn here, that is when um, there's been an FOMC day. So do I still have this up from earlier? I don't. But um, interesting that the VIX, normally what happens with the VIX, again, not VXX, but with the VIX, is the VIX rises into an unknown event. Now, previously, so January was kind of a different thing that happened in January. So I would maybe take that as an outlier. But if you look at uh, the one in March, the VIX actually climbed after the meeting. Um, same thing here back in the end of April. You know, there was a little bit of an uptick in the VIX uh, leading up to, but mostly afterwards. Uh, June, it didn't do much, kind of bottomed out, rose just a little bit afterwards. I wouldn't say big. Uh, but then August, then it shot up. Um, same thing with September. September, it actually increased after the meeting, which again is very uh, counter to what you would, to what volatility traders think. Again, normally, just like with earnings, right? 
with um, an event like earnings, the volatility, the price goes up because it's an unknown event. Once the event becomes known, once the cat is out of the bag, then volatility usually comes in. So, you know, I was thinking today that the, that um, being that the VIX is so low, um, what I did was I put on a small trade for the week. Uh, again, not risking a lot of money, but um, you know, basically being long volatility into the event, even though historically it hasn't really acted that way. But um, so I put this on for about 24 cents. It's marking at 28, so I already have a little bit of a gain where I went long the weekly uh, 2021 call spread in VXX. And that is the only time you will ever see me trade VXX because, again, I cannot reiterate enough, it is a piece of garbage, uh, that instrument. All right, so... Um, what else? I didn't really talk much about the market and breaking out the 52-week highs. Um, I discussed in the midday video, the I try to, as much as possible, go over uh, about volume. Um, I saw a lot of things today about people uh, saying, well, there's no volume today. So I went through a whole example that I won't rehash that because I spent about five minutes going over that. But um, you could see using uh, S&P futures, th this whole move up in from the lows of December to the highs of the beginning of May, notice there's no, there's no big uptick in volume, right? Volume happens on the turns, right? Volume does not happen um, while we're swinging up, right? So keep that in mind. I know that's a big thing that people want to see sometimes on pivots, on turns. Yes, volume happens. Um, again, if you want to see what happened here, when we this whole move, volume really wasn't present. Where was the where did volume go up when we started to go down? Right, that's when volume goes down. Anyway, that's I'm going to move on from there. So yeah, we're out to 52 week highs. Um, so, you know, I usually embrace these moves. I know people seem to get very worried when we break out to new highs. I embrace them. Uh, all along, what I would be looking for is divergences, right? So if market breadth is not confirming this move, then I would watch out for that. You know, it's a couple warning signs, but I, but you know, I really try not to micromanage um, as much as possible. You know, ride the trend. If you want to use the five period moving average, right? That's one easy way. We want to stick with the trend. We want to stick with breakouts. We don't want to fade breakouts, especially when we've been going um, sideways for a couple years, you know, and I know that there's a wall of worry about economics and this and that and this and that. Just follow, I think price is so much better than anything else to follow. Um, stick with the trend, follow it, go for, uh, you know, ride it out, take profits along the way. But um, for me, that's, I tend to embrace long swings. Um, and again, I'll look for divergences along the way. Market breadth, you know, I've been talking about this, talked about this in the weekend video, um, talked about this last week, which really got me um, positioned the right way. But this is the advanced decline line. This only updates once a day in Bloomberg. You can see as of 1025, but this is breaking out to new highs. This is what we want to see. Um, notice back here at the end of September of last year, breadth started to break down a little bit before the overall market did. Are we doing that now? No. Um, if we could come in here, right, and that could say that maybe we'll stall a little bit because it's super juiced. You know, single stocks have been performing really well. We've got a lot of participation, financials, industrials, materials uh, performed pretty well today. So there is a huge amount of participation, which gets me excited. Uh, you know, XME was your best performing group today. Um, that's different. Steel names, which we talked about them on Friday, you know, how we're seeing some positioning in those groups. Um, RS, which had an, uh, you know, had amazing performance. Um, look at this thing. Uh, Reliance Steel and Aluminum, which I think other companies started to realize this, you know, which is why I went long an aluminum company, um, you know, and when I go, when I do that in a, in a downtrend, I'm pretty quick with getting out of it. I'm 90% out of the trade today. But, um, you know, something, uh, it's amazing that that company is going up as much as it is. Um, Chinese internet companies, right? So as I mentioned, we've been seeing some uh, FXI positioning. But um, this K-Web, right, I talked about in the weekend video how names like PDD, um, VIPs have been going nuts. 
Uh, what's the third one that I had? Uh, TAL, which is also done really well. So I went long. I put this in the tactical portfolio, uh, which is a cash portfolio. I'm long Chinese internets. Uh, I think JD is going to be interesting once it gets back to this top of the range. We'll see if it, what it can do at this VPOC that's been lingering up here. Again, usually they're places to take profits. So I'm not sure how this is going to work for these guys. But it is at the top of the range and really hugging this 200-day moving average. So, and the 200-day moving average is, is sloping up. So, so no doubt pretty interesting. Um, as I mentioned, I took profits in Brazil. There is a VPOC still up here. I'll kind of wait to see if this maybe puts in a bull flag. Um, if not, maybe this thing does get taken out. But globally, market breadth, uh, I think, is getting better and better right now. And uh, we'll see if that changes. But for now, it's it's pretty strong. Um, option activity, a ton of option activity in names that are reporting earnings. Um, I'm interested to see what Pfizer and Gilead do tomorrow because I don't usually like same-day positioning, but there was a lot of stuff that went up today in Pfizer and Gilead. So they report tomorrow morning. You know, another sector that's been on been on fire is um, is healthcare. You know, up one percent today, outperforming. So again, nice to see different groups participate as they are, right? That's called market breadth. When you have when it's not just one group, you know, right? We talked about overcrowded growth names last week, and some rotation into some unloved areas, which is I think is a good thing, not a bad thing. So um, that's it for today's recap. You know, again, I'm super excited that we're breaking out to, to new highs. Again, my um, thought is to go with this and then, um, you know, look look for things that are not confirming. And right now, I think we're confirming. Um, if we happen to see high volume up here, that's a no-no. Um, you know, that would confirm that maybe people are taking profits. So as long as there's low volume, as long as the advanced decline line is continuing to, to make new highs, those are good things right now. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.